to have some witnesses in here. And instead of him getting upset with God, he said, have mercy on me, O oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thou many tender mercies in your darkest hour A false witness that speaks lies. You better be careful how you lie because somebody said a lie can leave Atlanta and get to the West Coast before you can get your pants on. before him. Good morning, everybody. Oh, how excited we are to be with everybody all over the world and here in the main sanctuary. And let's get started with our dynamic worship service with the officers of Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a good a hand. Amen. We thank God for allowing us to be here today. I want to dedicate this song to uh, Deacon Shelley Smith and all of the sick this morning. And uh, the Deacon Smith, when he comes back, uh, he'll probably be saying something like this. Lord, I thank you, thank you, Jesus, for my journey. Lord, you brought me from a, yeah, a long way. Will I thank you, thank you, G, for my joy? Oh, yeah. Well, you brought me from along. <clears throat> well, you brought me from the rocking of my cradle. Oh, Lord, you brought me from a long, long way. Will you brought me from the rocking of my cradle? Oh, you brought me from a long way. Well, sometimes up. Sometime down, still you brought me. Yeah, you brought me from a yeah a long way. Sometimes up, sometimes down, but you brought me. Oh, you brought me from a long way and I thank you, thank you Jesus for my journey Lord you brought me from a long a long way 
Will I thank you, thank you, Jesus, for my journey? Well, you brought me from a long, long way. Amen, amen. Let us stand for our scripture. Amen. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. I would like to call your attention to the number eighth Psalm. Right. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and nursed infants, you have ordained strength because, your, because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him, for you have made him a little lower than an angel. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep, all oxen, even the beasts of the fields, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, that passes through the path of seasons. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his word. You may be seated. Oh Lord, once again, Heavenly Father, you've blessed us. Blessed us, Heavenly Father, once again to be able to come through the doors of your house of worship, Lord. Father, we don't take it lightly, because we know, Heavenly Father, you create out of the Creator. You are the sustainer of all, Heavenly Father. You sit high and you look low, Lord. And you thought enough, Heavenly Father, to touch us with your finger of love this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, when so much else is going on, Heavenly Father, you, oh God, allowed us once again this day to live, Father. And we just come to say thank you, Lord. We come to give, humbly give you praise, Heavenly Father, knowing, Lord, that you didn't have to do it. But, Lord, in your love, in your kindness, Heavenly Father, and in your mercy, you did, Heavenly Father. We know truly that we're not deserving, Lord. Heavenly Father, there's so many things, Heavenly Father, that we didn't do. There's so many things that we did do, Lord. But Heavenly Father, you continually to pour down your blessings upon us, Lord, and we just come to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come, Heavenly Father, looking at this world, Heavenly Father, and we ask, Heavenly Father, that you touch us individually, Lord, touch us collectively, Heavenly Father. We come, Heavenly Father, on behalf of police brutality. We come on behalf, Heavenly Father, of, of bad government, Heavenly Father. We come, Heavenly Father, on behalf of poverty, Heavenly Father, asking, Heavenly Father, that you, that you be in the midst, Heavenly Father, that you create change, Heavenly Father, and you show us, Heavenly Father, and give us direction, Heavenly Father, to change our lives, Lord, and as we change our lives, to reach out and touch someone else's life, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come, Heavenly Father, with, with the sickness of, of our members and others on our hearts, Heavenly Father. Lord, we don't know what we can do, Lord, but we know what you can do, Heavenly Father. We know, Heavenly Father, that you're the creator, Lord. We know, Heavenly Father, that any, any sickness that we have, Heavenly Father, you can heal, Lord. And, Heavenly Father, you can give us a word. You can give us an action, Heavenly Father, to support those that are going through, Heavenly Father. Those, Heavenly Father, that are sick. Those that are homeless, Heavenly Father. Those that are lost in the free pardon of their sin, Heavenly Father. You gave us a mission, Lord. You told us to go out into all the world, Heavenly Father. But we yet and still, Heavenly Father, pass by those on the corners. Heavenly Father, we turn our nose up at those that have had less, Heavenly Father. Knowing, Heavenly Father, the only difference is that you blessed us, Heavenly Father, in another way, Lord. Lord, put it on our hearts to help someone else, Heavenly Father, that is less fortunate, Lord. Because it could be us, Lord. Father, we come this day, Heavenly Father, asking that you touch the pastor of this church, Heavenly Father. Touch his wife, Heavenly Father. Touch every member of this congregation that matter from Baptist Church, Heavenly Father. 
Lord, let us go out and do the healing and reconciliation, Heavenly Father, that we're charged with doing here, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask, Heavenly Father, that you be with us as we go forth, Heavenly Father. It's a mean world out there, Heavenly Father. There's so many challenges, Lord. We know, Heavenly Father, we got you on our side, Heavenly Father. We're able to conquer, Heavenly Father. We're able to go forth boldly, Heavenly Father, boldly, boldly into this world, Heavenly Father, saying, my God, my God sustains me, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we just thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you are, Heavenly Father. We thank you all that you've given us, Heavenly Father, and all that has come to be, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you, and in the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Good morning, my uncle. I've been looking, and I've been looking, still looking, and I can't see what's in the future. But I tell you what I'm gonna do. I think I run on see what the end will be. Think I run on to rain. Think I run on what you done. Well, there's something at the end of We got one of the world We got one of the world We got one of the world Well, there's something at the end of Well, I don't bother nobody I try to treat everybody the same Well, every time I Turn my back Things can look like my name Believe I'll pray on to rain Believe I'll pray on all your signs Believe I'm praying on all your signs Well, there's something at the end of Well, beat me, Jesus, beat me Well, beat me in the midst of the air Well, Jesus, to win Help me, Lord, meet me with the love of Paris. Sing on to rain. Believe I sing on, oh yes I am. Believe I sing on, oh yes I am. Well, there's something at the end Well, what a Jesus oh, morning Church, it won't be very long Well, you gonna look for me down here And I'll be gone on home Believe I'll run on to rain Believe I'll run on Oh yes I am Believe I'll run on Oh Lord well, there's something at 
There's something good at the end waiting for me. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Baxter. Now, we would like to turn the remaining portion of our service into the hands of the capital, Reverend Sister Ariel White Lorraine. Lorraine White. Let's put our hands together and give God praise in this place. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for, to our officers for a wonderful praise service. And now we will have our congregational hymn by Deacon Roger Long. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Help me with the congregational hymn. Rise, if you will. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, yes. This little light of mine, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine well now. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh Lord, and let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, church, I'm gonna let it shine, yes. This little light of mine, y'all, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let, let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. Everywhere I go, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, everywhere I go, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Oh, around my neighbor's door, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. Around my neighbor's door, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, around my neighbor's door, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh Lord, let it shine, let it shine. Oh Lord, let it shine. Oh, Jesus gave it to me, church. I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. Jesus gave it to me, church. I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, Jesus gave it to me, church. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, church. I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. This little light of mine, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, this little light of mine, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, Lord, and let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. This little light of mine, church, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, this little light of mine, y'all, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, Lord, let it shine. Let it shine. Lord, let it shine. Can Roger along this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine we will now have our welcome by brother Willie Watkins good morning Mount Ephraim good morning Mount Ephraim glad to see everybody this morning 
If we have any visitors in the house, would you please stand? Any visitors? Okay, we're just family today. That's okay. And to our virtual audience, we are still so glad to have you out there streaming the, our worship service with us this morning. And we welcome you to our service, 730 service, at Minor from Baptist Church. And we're so glad to have you. We are also, no we're not, this is what we're going to do. Do we have any birthdays in the house? Any birthdays in the house? Anyone celebrate a birthday today or on past last week? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from the entire congregation. Do we have any anniversaries in the house? Any anniversaries? <laughs> Amen. In the back. Happy anniversary to you. Pray, Lord, we give you all many, many more. And my thought for today and for the week is very short. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Be blessed and have a good week. Thank you, Trustee Watkins. We certainly thank you for that wonderful welcome. And now it's time to find out what's going on around town from Dr. Angela Taylor. Mount Ephraim. Ushers, if we have anyone in the vestibule, please let them in at this time. And while they are coming in, I would like to stand in agreement with Brother Willie Watkins and saying welcome to everyone who is here in the congregation today and welcome to our virtual congregation. We pray that you thoroughly enjoy your service with us today. Sister Mamie Knight, we say happy birthday to you. May God continue to bless you real good. Reverend and Mrs. Hari King, we say happy anniversary. And to our virtual congregation, we say happy first birthday to Joseph Howard Jr. May God continue to bless you. Keisha Godfrey, happy birthday to Reverend Penny Rogers, Reverend Gloria Smith, Maddie Baxter, and Kim Mitchell. Happy, happy, happy birthday to all of you all, and may God continue to bless you. And to the congregation who ensures that I have everyone's birthday uh, by reaching out via text and, be, and leave messages uh, with the church to make sure that I'm able to list all of those who are watching us virtually. Thank you for making sure that my nephew remain, remains in contact with our virtual congregation. And again, happy birthday, Mount Ephraim. These are your announcements. Join us every Wednesday morning for the prayer call with the pastor. That number continues to grow. And what a wonderful way to have a good midweek bounce back by starting off every Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. with a prayer call to the pastor with the pastor. Please visit our website, our Facebook page, get that telephone number and access code so that you all can uh, join in with that prayer call. Also on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock in the evening we have worship on Wednesday. That is our pastor's prayer. That is our pastor's teaching hour. It is a wonderful service. Dr. White is committed to making sure that we are learning not only more about the Bible but learning how to treat one another and learning how to be more humane. So we invite you to join us for worship on Wednesday. Mount Ephraim membership, we continue to be so grateful for all the gifts that you are given during this time. Please continue to download that Giveify app to your smartphone, your tablet. Select Mount Ephraim Baptist Church Atlanta, Georgia and follow those prompts to give. You can also go to our website, that's www.mymebc.com and click that donate button and follow those prompts to give as well. For those of you all who enjoy the more traditional forms of giving, please make your checks, your money orders payable to the Mount Ephraim Baptist Church and mail that to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Please remember that every Thursday, 
We have a free food uh, giveaway here at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church that starts at 11 o'clock in the morning in the Family Life Center. I told you all, I went to the grocery store, I don't eat eggs and all of that stuff, but I realized that eggs are a million dollars and they're getting higher and higher. So please, please, please make sure that you spread the word uh, that Mount Ephraim has a free food giveaway. Uh, there's no shame in needing help. The shame is in not accepting help. So if we have it available and it's open to not only the Mount Ephraim membership, but to the community as well. And so we invite everyone. Also, on Saturdays at 6 o'clock in the evening, Our Power is on Facebook Live. It's another phenomenal service led by our pastor, and we would love for you to join us again. That is on Saturdays at 6 o'clock p.m. Please join us. The Mount Ephraim Census continues to be on our website. Again, that's www.mymebc.com. We ask that you, uh, Mount Ephraim members, please complete that form. It comes to us electronically, and we would love to continue to keep up with you and the only way we can do that is if you uh, send that form the Mount Ephraim men united for Christ are collecting uh, they're collecting donations for the Bonterra nursing home they're asking that you donate body wash they have uh, receptacles in the lobby if you would please ma'am please sir please um, make your purchases of body wash and leave them in the vestibule every Sunday they greatly appreciate it and the Bonterra nursing home has sent word that they appreciate you adopting that facility to ensure that the residents there have all that they need in order to remain healthy and whole when they don't have family members to support them. Mount Ephraim, I am extremely excited because next Sunday starts Fellowship February here at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. What does that mean? That means that we are changing our schedule for one month here at Mount Ephraim. Starting next Sunday, Sunday Sunday school will start promptly at 8.30 a.m. and we will have one worship service experience at 10 o'clock a.m. Dr. White will take an observation of how we worship here at Mount Ephraim with this new schedule. He'll observe how we participate in Sunday school, how we participate as one body in the 10 o'clock a.m. service. He'll observe the gifts that we receive as offering and he will also take note of our virtual congregation and how they participate in uh, service virtually and after taking note of all of that and with careful consultation with the Lord Dr. White will make a decision of how we will proceed so again that is how we will look at fellowship February here at Mount Ephraim that means we will have a schedule change again Sunday school will start promptly at 8 30 a.m. Service will start at 10 a.m. and we will move forward in that manner. Also, if you would, please take note of these things that we have going on in February as well. Super Seniors, your next meeting, your next gathering is Friday, February 10th. I am so excited for you because you will start your uh, gathering at your regular time at 9 a.m. However, Kaiser Permanente, they will have a health mobile here so that they can do just the uh, the general uh, act. Uh, physical awareness for you so that you'll have a chance to talk to nurse practitioners on that health mobile. And while that health mobile is there, there will be a certified Medicare consultant here as well to assist you in making those decisions about making uh, the appropriate selection for your health care. So get ready for February 10th. That is forthcoming. There will be super senior representatives here after uh, both services today and you can also speak with sister Sheila Barnes and it's always super seniors you know that you will have individuals contacting you really soon to remind you of your event super seniors please remember the health care protocol you must be fully vaccinated wear your mask for the entire activity as well as present your vaccination card on the day of your event youth ministry 
please remember that your next meeting is Saturday, February 11th at 4 o'clock p.m., and that is via Zoom. Reverend Joseph Howard will be sending out the Zoom link for the volunteers who will be participating in the meeting. If you would like to participate in that meeting, we ask that you email the Reverend Joseph Howard at josephtroyhoward at yahoo.com. I'm also excited to uh, spread the word that the youth ministry, children and youth uh, ministry will be going on a field trip to the King Center and the Mary Mac Tea Room. And this is absolutely free for the children and youth ministry here at Mount Ephraim. The bus um, will be leaving here at 9 a.m. and we will be gone all day. The maximum capacity for the bus is 55. So we are capping uh, the, the, the field trip size to 55 individuals. Normally we open everything that we do to Mount Ephraim members. Because this is the first time we're going out under this new min ministry, we're going to reserve this this time for Mount Ephraim members. So again, Mount Ephraim members, this is specifically for you. It is 50, uh, we're having a cap of 55 people and it is absolutely free. If you would like to attend, uh, this is for zero to 18, please uh, email Reverend Joseph Howard. You can see any of the youth ministry uh, individuals uh, immediately after service. Children eight and under, parents, you must, parents and guardians, you must accompany, accompany your children. Again, it must be a parent and guardian accompanying your children, not the older sibling, but the parent and the guardian. Also, if, if your child um, is creative in a manner that might uh, impact others enjoying the trip, Parents, guardians, we encourage you to accompany your child as well, amen? Please read in between my lines. If your child is creative and needs supervision, we ask that you accompany that child as well. And for those of you all who love children and youth and would like to make a donation to ensure that this trip can remain absolutely free and that we can ensure that all of our trips and all of our activities for our children and youth can be absolutely free, please make donations to the Children and Youth Ministry and you can start by helping us pay for this trip. Please make donations through Givelify. You can also make donations to the uh, volunteers that we have here. I will be here immediately after both services, but we would love your support. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email Reverend Joseph Howard or speak with any of the volunteers. We would love to have you. And finally, our last announcement, Sister White, and Power Talk will be back the fourth Sunday in February. I am happy to announce that we will be talking about recovering from depression. Sister White and a therapist from Morehouse School of Medicine will be here. We have gone through some tough times and we are rebounding from some tough times. So this will be the ideal discussion. Get your questions together, get your um, statements together and be prepared for a wonderful power talk. This power talk will be, will occur immediately after our 10 a.m. service on the fourth Sunday and it will be aired on Facebook Live and live stream. This concludes the announcements. Thank you for your patience as I did all of these announcements and as I take my seat. On Thursday, it marked two years that my mother went home to be with the Lord. And then on Friday, we had the sad uh, opportunity to view a young man, uh, life being taken. And my family has a career in public safety. I have the opportunity to get up every morning to go into the courthouse. Judge Russell has the opportunity every morning to be in court. My nephew has the opportunity and the privilege to be in public safety now. And my mother was a correctional officer. And every day I love my job in public safety. I love working for the court, but I cried all weekend long, and I still love my job. And I tell you all 
that sometimes, even when I read research, research says that when, we, when people are assaulted by public uh, officers, it's not because of race. It's because they're drunk with power. It's not because they're black or white, but because the color blue is more powerful than their race. So I ask that you continue to pray for that family, but understand that there are a lot of us that get up every morning proud to be in public safety because what we want to do is represent our people well. So we do have good people out here who love you and who love our job. And we promise you that with every fiber of our being that we are going to do our best to make you proud. Have a good day. And in all things, remember to remain Mount Ephraim strong. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Every fifth Sunday, we look forward to hearing at this hour the R.L. White Corral. Here they come. Give them a hand. supposed to rehearse with this group yesterday but I felt physically that I could not but I thought about Jesus who would not come down when Jesus On Calvary, people came from my not answer them for he knew that Satan was him they said if you be the Christ Ooh. come down and say your life
decided to die. die.
says if you make a step for Jesus he will make a step for you I praise God today for everyone that's here thank Lorraine amen But she has been a great help in times like these. I want to do something now. I want all of the Mount Ephraim men united for Christ to come and stand across here. I'm glad to see you, Ellie. You need to be up here anyway. I want that new president to raise your hand. Now, they don't just call themselves that, but Anything that they can do to help Mount Ephraim, they're doing it. Amen. Amen. They feed the hungry. They're out there on Thursday trying to do everything that they can for the Master. And I wanted to say to you today, Mount Ephraim, men united for Christ. You bring a great joy to my heart to see you. Because sometimes it's hard to get men to go to church. Come on, somebody. And uh, Brother Henderson and Uh, the brother, I don't know if he's here or not today, John, oh yes. They get out there and they drive those trucks. They get out there and they bring it on and then the men united for Christ load these vehicles up because they want them to have some food. So I, I want you, Mount Ephraim, to stand and give them a great big round of applause. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, Brother Strozier is back there. He can't walk. But every week he has that, that crutch. And he doesn't make any excuses. He comes to church. I want to thank Dr. Taylor for reminding us that this month 
we're going to see if it really makes a difference for those of you who come to have church a little later. I've had some people call on the phone from across this country and they're saying, many of them, the hour you have service is good for us. But you're the ones who will help to understand. So as Angela said, I will be looking at the attendance the offering and the general process of 10 o'clock. So I will be asking you to let's look at 10 o'clock for the next four Sundays. And on that fourth Sunday, I will make an announcement as to which way we are going. Amen. After the message, there are some names that I'd like to call. I like to call, some of y'all don't know that our security is a minister too. And if you, you act right, it won't bother you. But I believe he will vacate that nice action and get down to the nitty gritty if he has to. He's become a friend. And sometime during the week he called. Now, he calls me the gospel quarterback. I like the way he says that. And I call him the Popo. <laughs> and we understand each other. Thank God for him. The reason I'm mentioning this, my heart was so heavy that those five policemen beat that young man to death. Lorraine saw me standing there. I took for granted it was one of these white cup things. But when I saw It's been a burden on my heart ever since. Amen. Can I tell you how all of this beating came into being? In slavery days, the, the slave master, if you made him angry, he would beat you in the front of your friends. And he would do it so harshly 
that we picked it up and we use it on our children. And somehow, in some way, we've got to make a difference. Amen. My daughter, Petrina, you all know her. She can tell you that in all of her years on this earth, I never beat her to punish her. I would sit her down with the rest of my children And one time I got through talking to her about what had happened. Later on that day, she said, Daddy, I said, yes. You make me feel so bad when you're talking to me. Sometimes I just rather for you to go and whoop me. <laughs> but she's grown up and with the rest of my children, to be a child that I'm proud of. We've got some names here on the sick list. Reverend and Sister Ronnie Howard. Sister Belinda Neal. You can run Comer's mother, I understand she's doing much better now. Reverend Sister Patty Evans, we thought at one point she was out of here. But God had another idea. So, Patty, we are glad to know that you're doing much better. I need somebody to tell me about Sister Pam Marcus. I understand her mother died. I need some more information. Reverend Betty Ferguson. Her brother, her last brother, is at the point of death. Sister Cunning Gardner and Sister Sherry Anderson's sister, Bobby Leslie. Jackie Henson, Sharon Brown, Sister Shirley Patrick, one of our most faithful deacons, Deacon Shelley Smith. And I want us to pray for him. And I know God is going to heal his body. Amen. Reverend Jackie Hubbard's brother, Stanley. Jackie, tell him we're praying for him. Sister Mary Kendall, Sister Rose Jefferson. Pastor R.L. White, we need your prayers. Amen. 
I am the state coordinator of the Ministers' Conference, which starts in Macon tomorrow. And I'm saying to my preachers who want to go, we will pay your tuition. And I lean on you as to how to where you're going to stay. I want them to see how proud we are at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. Let's stand and sing a verse of Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jason, I want you to help me on that. Thank you, son. Everybody, Jesus. Kentucky had been hurt by this COVID. And when I saw him this morning, I said, how's mom and dad? He said, they're doing well and they want Mount Ephraim to know that they thank you for your prayers. Amen. Psalms. 51 and 10. Y'all can help me with that, can't you? I, I want to see how many of y'all know that. Create. And 
Now, y'all did that pretty good, but I think you can do it a little better. Let's try it again. Create. Amen. Our subject today, the value of a renewed spirit. The value of a renewed spirit. When we look at the makeup of a man, some say that man is a dichotomy, meaning that he is body and soul. Others say that he is a trichotomy. Amen. Which means that he is body, mind, and soul. I tend to believe that man is a trichotomy. Amen. And it takes all three of these to make you a human being. The great psychologist, Abraham Maslow, in his hierarchy of human needs, says that in order for one to become what he calls a self-actualized, in other words, if you're ever going to be a complete individual, there are some things that an individual needs to be complete. One, an individual needs to be physiological safety. That means you cannot become all that you can be unless you have your physical needs met. You got to have some clothes to put on. Amen. You need whatever it takes for you to be a complete person. Amen. Amen. And then he says, an ind individual needs safety. Yeah. Whenever you know somebody that does not feel safe, that's a dangerous person because when you don't feel safe, you try your best to make yourself feel safe, even if it takes you to carry your nine millimeter. And this one thing that is bothering me now more than it has in my whole life is when your state, sincere as they were, has said that if you don't have a felony, you can go in and demand the gun. And I see black folk 
walking around with their guns hanging out. We have been mistreated. And they already felt like that if you give us enough rope, we will kill ourselves. And now, at the nightclubs, at the house parties, every time we get together, somebody gonna get shot. Whoever said that when colored folk get together, there's gonna be some rooting and tooting, cutting and shooting. Amen. And they asked a teenager this morning when I was getting ready, why do you carry a gun? He said, because I'm scared. And if somebody starts something, I'm going to be the first one to shoot. And it's a shame before God that your governor, I said your governor, said I'm happy to sign this law. And now it's like the wild, wild west. And that's why I ask you, if you don't have to go to this club down the street, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're trying to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't have to go to these house parties, don't go. We parents have let our children down because while they were young, we didn't teach them right from wrong. We did not teach them that if you don't have a life, you can't take a life. And sometimes, and y'all may not like this, I want to thank my father and mother lying in their grave, how they punished me when I was wrong. I wanted to fight them back. And one day my father, I mean, he really made me mad. And I looked at him like this. He said, boy, yeah. Yeah. you want to fight me, don't you? No, he said, I guess you do. And he would tell my sister, I want you to go get a switch. And if it's not big enough, I'm going to whoop you. And look like my sister would pull the limb off the tree. And I never thought that I could stand and tell them, thank you for caring enough so that the police department didn't have to train me. Amen. I want to tell you when these 
police put on that blue lights, you don't know what's in their mind. But I'm saying young black boys, men, don't give them a nasty attitude. Because when they left that car, they put their hand on that gun. Y'all don't believe me, do you? And I have learned that if you talk to them in a civil way, they'll let you go off. I have been stopped in every state I ever drove in. I have been in the highway two and three o'clock in the morning trying to get back to Atlanta. And I was coming through West Virginia, and the rain was sleep. And I had the hammer down. I saw him, I said, and this guy gonna turn around and get me. So when he pulled me over, First thing I said, how you doing? He said, I want to know how you doing. I said, I'm all right. Let me see your license. And I've carried a badge for the last 40 years. I got my license right under that badge. He said, you try to make it in, don't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, be careful. I could have said, what you stop me for? I could have shown him an attitude, but I showed him a nice attitude. Amen. I got plenty of stories. I was in revival in Florida, and when I got out of church one night, I drove to the next state, and I didn't know that I was so far from where I was supposed to preach. So when I found out, I let the hammer down. And this black state trooper pulled me over. And he looked at me, and I looked at him. He said, where are you going? I said, sir. I'm supposed to be in whatever that town was in the next 45 minutes, and I didn't know it was that far away. He said, you think you can slow it down? I said, I believe I can. <laughs> and he said, go on and preach good. Amen. I'm trying to say to you, it doesn't make you somebody just because you can argue at the man who pulled you over. I've gotten one ticket in the last 40 years. I've been stopped 50 times. I'm not going to sit me and tell you I don't speed. Amen. So you got to 
have a need for safety. You need physiological needs met. You need to feel safe. Amen. Amen. And Lorraine does not really feel safe until she hears that garage door coming up. Amen. And you're talking about hugging me. I'm so glad you're home. Amen. I said you were just scared. <laughs> Amen, Lorraine. <laughs> If you're going to be a full person, you've got to feel loved. If you've got somebody who does not feel loved, they will become a problem. And then you will need to feel belonging and self-esteem. You got to feel like somebody loves you. And you got to feel like you are somebody. Amen. And that's why so many people now never become all that they can because they don't feel self-esteem. They don't feel like anybody cares about them. And some of y'all are looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's hard when you want somebody to love you and they won't love you back. Amen. While I agree with Maslow's theory, Amen. there is one thing that I think he left out about the greatest need that an individual need to be complete. And that is to have a spiritual relationship with God. I want you to hear that. As a child of God, you will never feel complete unless you and God got it together. I want you to know today that God loves you, but he's not going to make you love him. Amen, somebody. And God is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. But the problem is, some of us are so proud that we want to do everything ourselves and act like you don't need the Lord. But I want to tell you, if you are ever going to self-actualize, you and God got to get it together. Amen. Amen. God wants you to talk to him. Early in the morning, he wants you to talk to him. All during the day. Amen. And God not only wants you to talk to him. But he wants you to say what it is you want from him. 
Have you ever gone looking for a parking space? And there ain't no parking spaces nowhere around. I said, Lord, you know I'm running late. Please show me where I'm going to park. And just as I pray, there's a car two or three pieces up backing out. And that says, consider the Lord in all your ways. And he will direct your path. I hope I'm being clear to you today. I submit today that one's greatest desire should be to have your spirit connected with the Holy Spirit. Because if you are not connected with the Holy Spirit, you're on your way down. Amen, somebody. And that's the reason that some of you, and you're looking at me so innocently, but you have not felt the Holy Spirit leadership in your life for a long time. God did not just make you to decide what you want to do rather than what you seek. In other words, when you get out of school, you say, now, let me see what I want to be. I think I want to be a businessman. And you just keep on flunking. Because the Lord is saying to you, that's not what I made you for. I want you to understand something. God did not make you so that you could be what you want to be. But God made you to fulfill what God made you for. Amen. Regardless of what I do in life, I know why God made me. You can awaken me in the midnight hour and I'll start preaching. I know sometimes Lorraine gets tired. But I said, but the Bible says, amen. And how are you going to know what to do when you don't know what the Bible has said? <laughs> Jeremiah 7 said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Amen. Amen. And when God made you, he knew that he had made you for a special purpose. Amen. I might not have to hoop here today. And you can only begin to understand God's purpose when you get in touch with the Holy Spirit. When you are wrapped up in the Holy Spirit, he will guide your spirit so that you will be pleased in the sight of God. One thing that we must understand, and that is the fact that we are all born 
with a bent towards sin. You don't have to learn how to sin because the devil will teach you how to sin. Have you ever seen a child three and four years old and they can cuss you out like a grown up? Because they have a bent towards sin. They will bite you soon as they get their teeth in. You don't have to teach a child how to do wrong. That's why God gave you your child to teach you them how to love God and to love your fellow man. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. When you are born again, God will give you a renewed spirit. And if you are not careful, you have the Holy Spirit within you. But sometimes you can allow issues that can crowd the Holy Spirit out. And let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit will not force you to do anything. But if you want to be in the will of God, you need to sing the song like we used to sing, lead me, guide me every step of the way. And Lord, if you lead me, I shall not go astray. Amen. But many of us, if you would tell the truth, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the one thing that I thank God for, and that is when I'm guilty, he doesn't put me out the family. Amen. He still loves me. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Aren't you glad that God loves you in spite of you? Sometimes you just get through cussing somebody out. Amen, somebody. And when you cuss them out and you go down the street and you say, I knew better than that. And then you say, Lord, forgive me. And how many of you know that God is faithful and willing to forgive you? I'm going to be through in a few minutes. But you have a spirit. Do you hear that? You have a spirit. And people can read your spirit. It is said that children, they read colors. So when you get a baby and place that baby in somebody's hand, that baby says, ah! And there's somebody next to them and you hand them, they start laughing. What happened? They read your spirit. It is said that Jesus' spirit was so strong that you could see a halo around his head. Now what happens is we cause our children to lose that spirit they used to have. How you do that? 
You see, children are really honest. And children will look at the lady and say, Mama, she ugly. Shut up, child. You can't, you can't do that. And every time your child starts to be honest, you want to spank them. And they soon learn that you can't tell the truth if you don't want a whipping. And that's where many of us are right now. You read people's spirit. Amen. I was over in the Holy Land. And there were Muslims all over everywhere. And they were being unnice to so many people. But one of them looked at me and said, he has nice spirit. I hadn't said anything. I had not done anything, but he read my spirit. And I want to say to you, you got a spirit too. And I want to know what do people think when they look at your spirit? She's so arrogant. I don't want to be around them. But then somebody else come and, and, and they can look at you and say, you know, I like being around you. They have read your spirit. Amen. And whether you know it or not, you read somebody's spirit when you came in here this morning. Amen. That's why you sit where you sat now. And you move from where you were going to sit because you didn't want to sit down. Why? Because they got a bad spirit. Preach white. When you are born again, God gives you a renewed spirit. And sometimes you can allow the world to crowd out the Holy Spirit. Amen. But there is one who is able to renew your spirit. Do you know him? The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you the way you should go. The Holy Spirit comes from God himself. I wish I had a witness. And if you really want to be in fellowship with the Lord, you've got to ask the Lord, lead me, guide me along the way. And if you lead me, I can not stray. Can I get a witness here? And it was David that wrote the 51st Psalm. And when he got down to the 10th verse, he recognized his spirit wasn't right. So he prayed, created me a clean heart. I don't like my own spirit, but if you created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit, is there anybody here who know the Lord will renew your spirit? Is there anybody in here who knows if you trust in the Lord, 
he will give you a new spirit and I'm glad today that I came to Jesus just as I was weary wounded and sad and I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad and that anybody here can be a witness won't the Lord change your spirit won't the Lord give you joy instead of sorrow? I'm glad I'm on the Lord's side. And I need some witnesses. If you're on the Lord's side, you ought to make some noise in here. When I think about where I used to be but I just kept on calling on the Lord and he has kept on blessing my soul the words I used to say I don't say them anymore folks I used to hate I don't hate them anymore I said created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Won't you do it? I'm only talking to those of you who know that you know that you used to be one way but the Lord has changed your whole life. Somebody ought to pray to me. As I close, one of our strong members, I don't know if he's here or not, on one New Year's Eve, he was going to a party. And he stepped in here and he said, this is a church. And I think my ushers, they said, we ain't letting you out, you're going to have to stay. And that night, he met the Lord. <laughs> if you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to change your life. This would be a good time right now. Doors of the church are open. I want to say this to you. If you died now, Do you know that you will go on to heaven? That's why I invite you today, and there's somebody listening to us on the television, that you don't know whether you're saved or not. And what happens is, you may not have a chance to be saved. Doors of the church are open. I want those of you who are watching us on TV You can be saved right now. I want you to pray with me 
and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. I accept you as my personal Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now there's someone who needs to come to the altar. Would you come? Bring your personal cares before the Lord. go with him all the way some of you are sick and you need a healing some of you got trouble in your home And you don't know what to do. Some of you are in financial distress. But I want you to know that God can make a way. Let's pray. Create in me. clean spirit renew in me a right spirit and these have come to the altar saying Lord we want to be right with you and if there's anything that keeps us from your joy. We submit it to you right now. If there's something in our spirit that's not right with your spirit, take it away from us. Some of us got trouble in our spirit, trouble in our homes, trouble on our jobs, but we know that you can do anything. So we cast our cares on you today. And say, fix me, Jesus. Fix me, please. And if you can't fix me standing here, I'll go on my knees. Lord, I need your spirit to lead and guide me the way you want me to go. And I claim a joy. I claim a spirit that is right with your spirit. And we are going to give you the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name amen amen go back and claim your victory
the officers are going to get ready to receive your offering and then we will be ready to go I need somebody to sing me a song Amen Send me the Jesus in you Jesus in me does the Jesus in you so easy so easy so easy so easy to love Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you, and it's so easy. So easy. me if I pray for you and you pray for me it's so easy so easy so easy so easy Loves the Jesus in you, and it's so easy. So easy. So easy. It's so easy. So, so easy So Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for all of the gifts that have been devoted and given to you, planting a seed in this ministry. God, we pray that everyone who gave from their heart, Lord, they gave to worship you in their giving. And we thank you, Lord, for the message and for this offering. May it be used for the upbuilding of this wonderful kingdom of yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Let me thank each of you for what you've done. I have to admit, you know, when you're going through some things, you, you have some good days and you have some bad days. And last night was one of my bad days. But I asked the Lord to give me words to make a difference. I want to thank these men, ushers, our officers, Mount Ephraim men united for Christ. And I want to thank you for what you've done. Let's stand. Thank our musicians. Hear me, Bob. He say, Amen. Everybody say, Everybody say, Amen. Let the preacher say, Let the deacon say, Amen. Let the member say, 